In this video, we will demonstrate our technique to perform a physician-assisted traction internal rotation hip radiograph, otherwise known as a traction view. The standard radiographic workup for our hip fracture includes an AP pelvis, an AP hip, cross-table lateral x-ray of the affected hip, and AP lateral views of the lateral femur. Hip fractures can be misclassified based on this initial radiographic series based on inexperienced readers, particularly in regards to the basi cervical femoral neck fracture versus the intertrochanteric fracture. This may lead to improper treatment and implant selection. A physician-assisted traction internal rotation view of the affected hip can help elucidate the correct fracture pattern. In a landmark article in a bulletin of the Hospital for Joint Diseases, Koval et al. published a series of 47 complete series of x-rays of hip fractures that were shown to PGY1 and PGY2 junior orthopedic residents. There was a significant increase in agreement between junior residents reading these x-rays and trauma attendings, as well as 57 or 8.1% of changes in the classification after the traction and internal rotation view. 50% of these changes would have resulted in an implant or surgical procedure change. The traction internal rotation view not only helps to clarify the fracture pattern and provide a preliminary assessment of how your reduction will appear on the fracture table in traction, but one of the other main advantages is that the internal rotation component brings the proximal femur into a true AP view due to the antiversion of the femoral neck. This is demonstrated in this slide as internally rotating the leg brings the femoral neck, which is a native antiversion, into a perpendicular alignment to the trajectory of the x-ray beam. As you can see here in this x-ray, the patient's hip is in external rotation and shortened, and once internally rotated and pulled with traction, you can see the femoral neck on FOSS or perpendicular to the x-ray beam. Mean native femoral antiversion is 10 plus or minus 7 degrees, and thus the average internal rotation should be aimed for 10 to 15 degrees. Here is another example of the effect of the internal rotation component. Initially, the hip fracture causes the lower extremity to sit shortened and externally rotate, as demonstrated here. Once you rotate the lower extremity internally with traction, the fracture better aligns and the proximal femur is presented on FOSS or perpendicular to the x-ray beam. To perform a traction view of the hip, the patient should be positioned supine on the radiology table. It is important to ensure the patient is in a gown to avoid any metal artifacts such as belts, coins, and pockets from obscuring the image. The patient should be instructed to hold their own arms overhead or hold the table and be warned to avoid grabbing their hip from pain during the traction view. The following is a video demonstration of a traction internal rotation view. The patient is positioned supine on the radiology table. One hand should be placed on both the patient's lower extremities. The patient is instructed to hold their arms above the head or hold the table to prevent the hand from going into the view. With counter traction, the contralateral lower extremity is buttressed to prevent the patient from sliding down the table. And then the injured leg is pulled and internally rotated until the patella is facing superior. The radiology shoots the x-ray and then the traction can be let up from the injured extremity. This is another video demonstration of the same traction internal rotation view from above. Again, the contralateral leg is held to prevent the patient from sliding down the table. The injured leg is pulled and internally rotated, and the x-ray is shot. The following are examples of two AP hip x-rays in external rotation and shortened. Once traction and internal rotation is applied, the fracture patterns for each can be much better appreciated. The patient on the left was seen to have this reverse obliquity atypical hip fracture near the subtrochanteric region and the patient on the right was seen to have a reverse obliquity intertrochanteric femur fracture. Both underwent an operative repair of their hip fracture with a long cephalomedullary nail.